Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and, uh, and committee members. Uh, I first would like to thank the committee staff for working uh, with my staff on this bill. Uh, this bill, uh, SB 1345, is a three-year extension to a pilot project created in 2011. If extended, this project will create a well-thought-out off-highway vehicle roadmap that would include the signage and enforcement needed to establish a coherent network of trails for residents and visitors in Inyo County. District Bill. The goals of the pilot project are to preserve traffic safety, improve natural resource protection, reduce off-highway vehicle trespass of private land, and minimize impacts on county residents. In 2011, this bill, AB 628, by then Assemblywoman Connie Conway, established a five-year pilot project that allowed Inyo County to designate specific county streets and roads as combined use routes for off-highway vehicle use. Approval of these routes requires a collaboration of just about everybody. We got the CHP, the Department of Transportation, County Sheriff's Department, County Supervisors, County Road Departments, the Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service, and the public all giving input. We are seeking an extension to AB 628 simply because the thorough environmental review and public input segments of the process took the bulk of the five years time frame. As a result, less than six months of data has been collected since the opening of these, of these three combined use routes currently authorized under the program. Neither this bill nor the existing pilot program creates a single new trail or road. That's important. What it does do is create a better network of trails and more importantly, a, a legal and regulated means to access existing maintained trails. No new infrastructure would be necessary. Inyo County relies extensively on tourism dollars and has a robust ATV OHV community. Therefore, this is a very important bill for the local community up there that has been devastated by tree mortality and wildfires. For these reasons, I ask for your I vote. Uh, testifying in support uh, today is Paul Smith, Rural County Representatives of California, and Matt Kingsley, who has come all the way from Inyo County to testify on our behalf. So, uh, gentlemen. Please state your name and who you represent, please. Uh, my name is Matt Kingsley. I'm the 5th District Supervisor from Inyo County. Uh, I'm here to testify in support of SB 1354, extension of the Adventure Trails um, pilot project. Our Board of Supervisors worked um, hard with opponents and proponents uh, together to come up with this compromise proposal that um, will continue with the extension. Uh, the extension is seven routes, um, which were picked specifically because of the low impact to residences and uh, environment. Uh, these combined new, um, there's many rules that are in place with this the, on these combined use um, um, routes, including um, the requirement to have insurance, taillights, uh, 35 mile hour speed limit uh, outside of any residential or near residential areas and a 15 mile hour speed limit inside uh, and only uh, for use during daylight hours. Uh, additionally, we uh, required, we did a photo set so that we can monitor any trail proliferation that may occur over the next few years and uh, we have a, a website that allows residents to to um, report any um, misuse or complaints about the, the system. Um, tourism is an important part of Inyo County's economy and this does give us a, one more uh, opportunity for tourists to come and visit our county. Um, in asking, um, I'll be asking our board to also um, hold an annual workshop so that we can continue to have a, a good dialogue with our residents on the, on the opportunities and, and problems that this uh, program may provide. So lastly, I just want to thank Senator Berryhill for supporting our bill, this bill. And uh, Inyo County doesn't get to come here often, so this is kind of an exciting moment <laughs> for us, and I appreciate your engagement on the issue. 
Next witness, please state your name, who you represent. Mr. Chairman and members, Paul Smith with the Rural County Representatives. We are in strong support of the bill. We believe additional three years to continue the pilot study and the work that was begun um, in December is much needed, um, and we look forward to uh, that work and the results of that study. Thank you. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing none, any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the Author's bill, we have one. Please state your name and who you represent, please. Good afternoon, um, Chair and members. This is Diana Vasquez. I'm here on behalf of Sierra Club of California. Um, unfortunately, we're here opposing SB 1345. Um, however, we've been working with your staff and also with the sponsors of the bill and really trying to understand how we can actually come to a more of an agreement. Um, historically, the club has been opposing any expansions or any new developments of off highway vehicle trails or programs. So for these reasons, we have to remain opposed. But we're looking forward to working with the sponsors and as the bill moves forward and really addressing some of the issues that we've been um, raising. So thank you. Thank you for that thoughtful approach. Any members of the public that would like to testify in, uh, in opposition to the author's bills? Seeing none, any members of the committee have? Ms. Baker? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Senator. Um, if this were not approved, are there, what, uh, is there some open space or forest lands that would end up getting used and be unregulated, or is there uh, some exposure that would happen if this does not pass that would have greater impact? I, I, I will defer, but I, just a, a, a real quick comment. In my opinion, this bill is a very environmentally good bill because it keeps everybody on those trails and keeps them from going into, into the private lands, into the forest lands, uh, creating dust and havoc out there. So mm -hmm. we think this is a very environmentally good bill. The... Uh, the use that's happening now is is uh, mostly regulated in that it's on forest or BLM roads. What this really does is allow the opportunity for um, people to be camping in a campground and ride from the campground to an appropriate place to ride, which we think uh, is, is far superior to them driving off somewhere uh, Getting out, you know, dumping their trailer and then heading out into the forest. So this way, there it is regulated, it's signed, and then there is there is rules, and we also have the opportunity to use our our local law enforcement to patrol and and um, and are collecting comments. So we just think it's a it's a it's a it's a really um, measured approach that we think will give us data that we can look at in the future to see how it's working. Thank you. Member Melendez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm having a little bit of a hard time understanding everything that you've outlined in this bill, but can you tell me, is there some reason why this, this cannot be handled at a local level? Is there some reason this has to be handled at the state level? Well, the state law require, allows counties to have three miles of combined use on county roads. This legislation allows 10 miles, and that's, that's the, uh, the reason there's some legislation. We do appreciate uh, Sierra Club's input, and I, I look forward to working with them also if this bill is able to move forward. Any other questions of the committee of the <clears throat> author? Senator, would you like to close? Uh, ask for my vote. Senator Berryhill, I'll be supporting your bill today. Extending this the OHV pro, pilot program into Inyo County will allow the county to fully implement the routes and gather valuable data. I urge the county supervisors to continue to work with local residents and be transparent with the community throughout the pilot. But I only want this to go the next three years. I don't want to see it again. So make sure that this study gets done because we study these things to death. I'll be voting aye on your bill today. Thank you. That is correct. We have no motion on this bill. So now we have a dozen, dozen motions. <laughs> Who do you identify? <laughs> Baker and Dodd first and a second. Go ahead and give it to Linda after the floor. No. <laughs> no. As soon as you lose. So, Madam Secretary, call the roll. The motion is to pass to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier. Aye. Frazier, I. Linder. Aye. Linder, I. Baker. Aye. Baker, I. Bloom. Aye. Bloom, I. Brown. Chu, Chu, I, Daly, 
Daly, I. Dodd. Dodd, I. Eduardo Garcia. Eduardo Garcia, I. Gomez. Kim. Mathis. Medina. Melendez. Melendez, I. Nazarian. O'Donnell. Thank you, members. Then as nine, we'll leave the roll open for absent members. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Senator Hancock. Senator, you'll be presenting Senate Bill 1279. Please proceed when you're ready. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I'm here to present SB 1279, which specifies that in the future, the California Transportation Commission will not allocate state funds for new bulk port terminals if they include plans to export coal. In 2006, California voters approved Proposition 1B, which allocated $20 billion in bonds to advance infrastructure projects, mobility, safety, and air quality improvements throughout the state. Prop 1B emphasized that projects receiving funds must address the state's most urgent needs and reduce pollutant emissions. $2 billion of Prop 1B were allocated to the Trade Corridor Improvement Fund, and that placed an emphasis on projects that improve trade corridor mobility while reducing admissions of diesel particulate and other pollutant admissions. The City of Oakland was awarded over $176 million from these funds for site preparation and development. The initial project provided uh, the grant proposal provided to the CTC did not mention coal. It did not include the potential for the transport or the export of coal. However, last year the project changed so that the major use of the port will be to export coal from Utah. Now, Californians' investment in clean energy are a significant accomplishment by the state to address climate change, but also to position ourselves uh, as leaders in building a green economy. We do this in transportation and energy in many, many ways, and it serves our economic interest very, very well. Funding projects that would contribute to pollution and climate change are contrary to those goals. This bill builds on the work done by the legislature in previous years. In 2015, SB 185 required, and it does require, actually, um, CalPERS and CalSTRS to divest our state pension funds from coal. And in 2006, the state passed a bill signed by the governor, implemented by the CPUC, to, to phase out our use of coal energy from coal-fired power plants in California. And we have virtually completely done that. We don't buy coal-fired power. We don't invest in coal anymore. It's also a prudent and logical economic decision because in the United States, coal is a dying industry. Since 2008, coal stocks have plummeted 66.9%. Major investment funds, such as J.P. Morgan, have announced that they will no longer invest in coal-fired power plants or in coal mining or coal export. So the people of California deserve to be assured that their taxes will not contribute to the transport and export of a fossil fuel that will eventually contribute to their asthma rates, cancer po possibilities, and lung disease, and that are not very good economic investments either. However, 
Nothing in this bill prohibits any city that wants to spend its own money, any county that wants to spend its own money, or any private investor that wants to invest their money from investing and developing, they can get the permits, a coal export depot. Um, it simply says that the state money, the taxpayer money of the people of California won't be used to do that. According to US EPA and the Union of Concerned Scientists, coal is the largest air polluter in the world. That's one of the reasons China, for example, is trying to divest and change its energy economy as well. SB 1279 is a necessary and clarifying step that should be taken so the CTC and the legislature no longer continue to invest funds in fossil fuels that um, affect the health of our citizens. The bill has been narrowed to clarify that CTC funds would be restricted only to new facilities. It does not affect any projects that currently exist, and it would not affect any of those projects receiving state money to improve safety, rehabilitation, congestion reduction, modernization, maintenance, or repairs. So uh, for all of those reasons, I would respectfully ask for your I vote. And with me today, I have two speakers, Erica Maharg, staff attorney from the San Francisco Baykeeper, and Mayor Tom Butt from the city of Oakland, which is, oh, Richmond, thank you. I know. The other white meat. <laughs> we, yeah, right, from the city, the city of Richmond, which is an adjacent city and along the rail line. Mr. Butt, Mayor, would you like to proceed first? Um, as uh, Senator Hancock said, I'm Tom Butt, uh, elected mayor of the city of Richmond, a city of about 110,000 in Contra Costa County on San Francisco Bay, less than 10 miles north of Oakland. Richmond is bisected by two main rail lines, BNSF and UP, both of which run through low-income Richmond neighborhoods and which could be used to transport coal to Oakland. In fact, UP already transports over 1 million tons of coal annually to Levin Terminal in Richmond, a privately uh, owned terminal that Richmond has no control over. The Richmond City Council does not allow coal shipments from any city-owned uh, port facilities, but we have little control over privately owned facilities like Levin. The, city, the Richmond City Council has also taken a position against uh, the proposed Oakland coal terminal. Richmond is already heavily impacted with pollution, including coal dust, and we get a lot of complaints from residents about the existing coal shipments. I have seen the coal dust myself, and I can tell you that at Levin terminals on public streets, they routinely have to sweep the streets with mechanical street sweepers, and they have individuals there with push brooms getting it out of the nooks and the, and the crannies so the mechanical sweeper can pick it up. Uh, Richmond is a low-income community, largely of color. In fact, Richmond has the lowest median family income of any of 101 cities in the nine-county Bay Area, with one exception, San Pablo. San Pablo is totally surrounded by Richmond. In Richmond, the childhood asthma rate is more than twice the national average already. Additional coal dust from new coal trains bound for Oakland would seriously exacerbate Richmond's exposure to existing coal dust, not to mention diesel fumes from the additional trains. We also have two freeways bisecting Richmond uh, which are heavily polluters with uh, diesel exhaust. And we have the Chevron Richmond Refinery, the largest refinery in the Bay Area. So the proposed Oakland coal terminal puts the health of Richmond residents at severe risk. And I urge you to support SB 1279. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness, please state your name and who you're representing, please. Yes, my name is Erica Mahar. I'm a staff attorney with San Francisco Baykeeper. And thank you, Mr. Chair and members, for allowing me the opportunity to speak in support of SB 1279. 
SB 1279 aligns with California's commitment to address climate change and be a leader in that area. Over the past decade, the legislature has passed several bills committing California to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The senator mentioned last year that SB 185 was passed, which ordered CalPERS to specifically divest from coal. The state, its citizens, and businesses have made major financial investments to cut greenhouse gas emissions. But without SB 1279, taxpayer money could be used to undermine those efforts by supporting the um, new coal export facilities. For example, in Oakland, over $176 million of CTIF funds have gone to, to um, build the Oakland Export Terminal, which will primarily export coal. And the climate change implications of exporting coal are significant. For the Oakland Export Terminal, it's estimated that the annual greenhouse gas emissions from com combusting the coal that will be exported will exceed the greenhouse gas emissions of the four Bay Area oil refineries combined. So in addition to climate change impacts, there are also public health and environmental impacts. Coal trains release particulate matter, as Mayor Butt mentioned, while traveling, unloading, and loading. And regular exposure to particulate matter levels causes a wide range of serious public health effects. These impacts are particularly catastrophic for residents of disadvantaged communities who are already overburdened with pollution. So there may be, I understand there may be some reluctance to this bill because it singles out coal, but I believe that it is common for the legislature to regulate or treat products and commodities differently because of public health impacts or environmental impacts. Also, as the Senator mentioned, this bill is limited. It does not ban coal export facilities. It merely states that coal export facilities that are proposed to be built near disadvantaged communities will not be funded by taxpayer money. For these reasons, we urge the committee to vote in favor of SB 1279. Thank you. Move the bill. Second. Any other witnesses in the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Please state your name and who you're representing, please. Michelle Parasad with Public Advocates, and we are in support. Thank you. Next witness, please. Dana Vasquez, Sierra Club, California, in support of the bill. Thank you. Rosanna Carvacho on behalf of the Alameda County Board of Supervisors, in support. Thank you. Lee Sandall with the International Longshore and Warehouse Union and its Northern California District Council, in strong support. Thank you. Next. Witness, please. Good afternoon. Uh, Mike Jacob with PMSA. We're removing our opposition with the amendments that were taken on June 20th, so we are now neutral on the bill. Wanted to thank the author for working um, with us on those amendments. They um, take away our legal concerns regarding potential discrimination against port terminals and um, resolve some operational questions that we had. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses of the public that would like to testify and support the author's bill? Any witnesses in the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill? Any members of the committee have questions of the author? Senator, would you like, oh, Mr. O'Donnell. Yeah, um, Senator, um, first of all, I want to uh, tell you how much um, I appreciate your efforts to clean the environment, go green. You've done, you know, heroic work at the Sacramento level and beyond. I just, just looking at this bill, as one who comes from a port community and and shares your concerns about coal in general, um, and also making sure our ports are a healthy and green neighbor. The one, one, one thing that's con concerning me here is, you know, today it's coal. Tomorrow it might be um, it might be tobacco. Uh, the next day it might be you know, you know, a vegetarian pushing a policy doesn't want meat shipped down the rail lines through a port. So help help me. Help me understand that. Help me feel comfortable with voting for this, because right now I'm really struggling with this. And it isn't that I love coal. That's not what I'm in love with. But I just wonder about, you know, is this a slippery slope? Next year, do we see something else? The next year, something else after that, where people take their personal preference towards products and say, well, you know, it shouldn't be essentially, what we're saying is it shouldn't be shipped through the port. One can always say that. <laughs> you know, I mean... Today, coal, tomorrow, cotton. But the fact is that coal dust kills people. We know that. Um, we do regulate products.
that are dangerous to human life. And right now, quite honestly, we've reached the point where in many of the communities along the rail line, human health has been seriously compromised. Um, and in terms of globally, right, you have to say, uh, we're told by scientists that if we go over 300 parts per, 360 parts per million of greenhouse gas emissions, we get into a process that is a tipping point. You can't reverse it anymore. And that we're now on track to go to 400 parts per million. So this is something, it's really bigger than any one of our committees. We know how important it is. And it's so interesting that it's also a really bad economic deal because everybody from the biggest investment houses down is divesting from coal. And what, what we are able to shape in our state is, among other things, out where our state money goes. And we try to prioritize our very limited funds to the things that will give us the most return for our money. And I believe that investing taxpayer dollars is really an exercise in futility. And, you know, this uh, doesn't help with the going forward, although it might. I don't know how much money is left in the 1B bonds. But the 1B bonds were explicitly designed to improve air quality, to clean the air. And, to, and the CTC, I have to, the CTC had no idea coal was in that proposal because it was never mentioned. And it, what this bill will do is clarify the intent of the legislature. So if someone wants to put in a coal export depot, they will have to tell the CTC that in their application, and their application will not be uh, accepted, mm -hmm. and the money will go to all the other things that we need, the streets and road repair, the bridge repair, all the things that we all agree on. And that's what I'm trying to, what I'm really trying to do here. Thank you. May I have a moment to comment? Uh, we have question? another question of the okay. author. Thank you. Mr. Bloom. So, I, I, you know, I support this measure. I think it, it actually is quite important. Um, but I want to point out that it only applies to new facilities. Yes. Oh, yeah. um, so the, I, I, I understand the, the slippery slope argument, but I, I don't think it's really applicable here. Uh, I think there's a very, very, very limited class of um, facilities where they would rise to the level of the state having an interest yeah, in true. regulating them or saying not not here. What comes to mind is the um, uh, discussion that happened over LNG terminals uh, a, a number of years ago, and I think the you know the state has a legitimate interest. We have a legitimate interest in having dialogue around those types of facilities. It's you know new, it's big, um, and it has a potential impact. Um, a, a new facility built specifically for the purpose of transporting nuclear fuel rods. Also, the kind of thing that uh, uh, might be worthy of discussion, but I think it's a very, very narrow uh, 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 class of circumstances that might apply. Ma'am, would you like to respond to Mr. O'Donnell's? No. Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to say that um, I understand your point, but I do think that the difference between tobacco or another, you know, meat or something like that is that um, those products don't blow into neighborhoods that um, are already burdened with pollution. Um, from Baykeeper's perspective, that facility is also right along um, in Oakland. The facility is right along the water, and that heavy toxic heavy metals from the coal dust are also blowing into San Francisco Bay. So there's a reason. It's not just a product with the commodity or a problem with the commodity. It's the health impacts and the real environmental impacts of having it um, in those neighborhoods. Well, so thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, and I don't want to get into a long dialogue here, but I, I would hope that if coal was going to be shipped in the port of Oakland, it would be covered. 
I mean, it's um, well, a couple of things on that. Let me just, uh, number one, it, it isn't the Port of Oakland. This is a new coal depot. <clears throat> Uh, the Port of Oakland actually turned down shipping coal, a, actually a contract with the same coal company that wants to ship it out of the private place. Um, and uh, as have many, many ports along the Pacific Coast. Um, uh, again, I still would urge if they're trying to come, you know, if there's a new facility and it's going through a neighborhood that they would cover it. I would, yeah. I, I, I think, I think what we're talking about here is there's two different things going on here. There's the overall concept of shipping coal out of our nation to be used by a foreign country, and it is very harmful to the environment in general. Then there's the, the, the exercise of, of actually shipping the coal down in a, in a rail car down a line that is near people and people you know, the particulate mm -hmm. matter flowing into the air right. nearby. I think legitimate right. concern. I'm just saying there are things that can be done to address that. There are, there are a number of concerns, and, you know, I think that's why the ILWU, the longshoremen, the workers who would have to unload the coal trains and load the coal onto the boats, um, are so firmly opposed to this as well because they know what happens to coal miners. And in terms of the covered cars, we uh, had heard talk about that, but it turns out no one manufactures those. They don't exist. They're not in wide circulation. And one of the reasons is that apparently covered coal cars can explode because when you contain coal um, in an enclosed place, it um, mm -hmm. heats up. So maybe technology will do something about that someday. But at the moment, the technology to have covered coal cars um, does not exist. Thank you. Yeah. Any other members of the committee have questions of the author or the witnesses? Seeing none. Senator, would you like to close? Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate again, this is only new facilities. Our existing facilities, we want them to be able to get state money to modernize, repair, be as good um, and modern as they possibly can be. And that this is really our state money that prioritizing our investments going forward. And um, I really do appreciate the railroads for removing their opposition and the Pacific Merchant Shipping Association for removing its opposition because uh, we have taken language to make that absolutely clear. So um, for the health for using our transportation dollars for our highest priorities, for the health of our communities, for the fact that it's probably a wise economic decision, I would respectfully ask for your I vote today. Thank you, Senator. Um, I just have one question also. I just kind of popped up uh, when you mentioned that the opposition that had been removed, uh, but the Teamsters still are opposing this bill, correct? The Teamsters are. Can you explain to me why they are? I don't opposed? actually understand that either. You haven't had a discussion with them? No. I so they just sent you a letter? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, Senator Han Hancock, I share your concern about health associated risks in, in uh, communities that are adjacent to ports. Um, and I do have concerns. I don't think we should allow a product that moves on a system dictate the system. Uh, and I fear this starts us down a slippery slope. Uh, I'm afraid that we're going to go ahead and incite and, and, and invest in green, econ green poverty by trying to start telling us when and where we can put things. Uh, but I am going to vote yes on this bill today. Thank you. And I'll be tracking it through to the floor. Thank you, and I'd like to work with you as a But minute. I would look forward to making sure that self-help counties and all of the other investments that can actually make uh, a private public partnership work continually move forward. Because we are talking about jobs also. Absent of this product, we need to be able to make sure that if technology has embraced this to make it a better way of transport, that we don't exclude it because of this bill if it is an impact and lessens the impact. So um, 
Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Oh, gosh darn it, it's been so long. We have a first from Mr. Nazarian and a second from Mr. Chu. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due passed to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Linder, no. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Aye. Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gomez? Aye. Gomez, aye. Kim? No. Kim, no. Mathis? No. Mathis, no. Medina? Melendez? No. Melendez, no. Nazarian? O'Donnell? No. O'Donnell, no. Your bill has seven. It needs, I believe, nine to get out. Two more. We'll leave the roll open for absence members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Madam Secretary, we're going to go ahead and lift the call and try to catch up with some of the absent members' votes.